Super Talk Mississippi media production. Discover the Copaya Advantage. Copaya County is a Mid-South gem with a spirit of opportunity, a business-friendly environment, and access to major transportation networks. Copaya County, let's do business. Visit copayaworks.com today and discover the Copaya Advantage. Hey, welcome to another edition of Mississippi Magic. As we open the book to another episode and researching the history of the subjects of each of these stories, really not surprised how many came from small communities and towns, because we are a rural state. And we also know that many survived on the farms across the state. But another common denominator was the importance of the lumber industry as a means of survival. Take, for instance, Robert. Born in yet another very rural and very small Mississippi community, little community yet today, with only about 500 good folks, still surrounded by a forest, the same woods where his dad cut and sold timber. In this edition called Bet the House. But first, this reminder from our good friends at Divinity Equipment making this podcast available. If you've got a job that needs some one-time help, Divinity Rental Divisions in Jackson and Madison They're standing by to help you. Everything from tractors to mowers, implements to excavators, forklifts, trailers, you name it. When you need some big muscle to move a big job to completion, Divinity Rental should be your first stop. Now look, for the full listing of equipment and rental costs and what the inventory has, all you got to do is check it out at the website, DiviniEquipment.com. It's that simple. Just a reminder, that special financing and pricing we've been talking about, is good on the Kubota zero-turn mowers and the compact tractors until the end of August. And it really is true that at Divinity Equipment, they've grown their business over the years as an industry leader by settling for nothing less than the highest quality products, most innovative solutions and services, all delivered with integrity and professionalism. They wouldn't have it any other way. When you deal with Divinity, you're in for a bit of Mississippi Magic. Divinity Equipment Highway 51 North in Madison and also Jackson. Check them out. Robert came into the world at the end of World War II, a baby boomer. When Johnny came marching home again and so did his dad and thousands of other soldiers, ready to get on with their lives. And that his parents did. His dad was into timber, his mom into teaching. So Robert's formative years had good examples to teach him the value of hard work and a good education. Later in life, that would pay off in more than a million ways. He really wasn't unlike most farm kids in that generation. Never remembers not working well before school started and the dark of night he was expected to wake up without constant parental pleading before school started. That meant writing to where the stack of papers were delivered, rolling them, putting on the rubber band, then making sure they they were all delivered in the proper place before 7 a.m. Most times his first stop at school was to wash his hands to get all the ink off so he wouldn't stain his classwork. At some point, the family left the farm and traveled north. Robert enrolled in a new school and became his mom's star student, finally receiving honors in high school, and then a master's degree in public affairs from... Princeton University. Armed with a great education and good contacts made along the way, he applied for an open PR position in Washington, D.C. at Public Broadcasting Corporation, and Robert got it. But here's where the ordinary turns to special. You see, the kid born in a small Mississippi town didn't just spend eight years there. He soaked up everything like a dry sponge in a pouring rain. He wanted to learn everything about television. He was fascinated by each incremental part from the audience to the accounting. So by 1979, Robert, now a full-fledged businessman, couldn't ignore all those voices in his head that kept him thinking. What if, what if television had something different? Something for a specific, underserved, targeted audience? Would it work? How would it work? How much would it take to try? All daunting questions, certainly if backed by personal financing, to take a chance on this idea, a risk. You could take a guy born in a small Mississippi town to the land of riches or rags. But Robert had a wild card, a little Mississippi magic flowing through his veins. He took that dream and his willingness to take a risk and bet the house, put everything on the line. For Robert, it was a lifetime bet with a capital B-E-T. 
Now we fast forward a bit. After a whirlwind year, what seemed thousands of meetings and commitments and agreements and red tape and sleepless nights and lots of controversy over the entire idea, January 25th, 1980. Robert's dream appeared in all of its magnificent glory right in the front of his eyes and the eyes of thousands in homes across America, Eh, except in his little hometown in Mississippi where he was born. As a matter of fact, the longevity of Robert's dreams were quite uncertain in those first few months of existence. The meager two hours of programming were just seen in selected cities across America. That was nowhere near enough to survive in the competitive world of television advertising. But Robert never gave up. With the knowledge he soaked up from the years at PBS, his work ethic learned on a Mississippi farm, and a bit of Mississippi magic, by the end of the year, Robert's network was truly a network. The viewership reached across North America and the Caribbean, with targeted programming now filling the 24-hour clock. That impact, that audience, that success took him out of the shadows into the spotlight. And with Robert's personality, it brought more controversy everywhere but his birthplace because, well, they didn't get the channel. And as the new network specifically targeted to a specific audience was now competing at the level of the big guys, Robert's growing empire was showing some signs of cracking. After an incredible run all the way through the 1990s, three areas were trending in the wrong direction. First, The audience was changing, getting a lot older and not adding younger viewers. Second, the cost of competing with any targeted audience in the news and entertainment business was astronomical. And third, the bottom line was telling Robert he needed to make some changes, and he had to make them fast. When his press release hit the news in 2002 of his restructuring plan, it shook the industry. He eliminated all the news staff on his network except those doing one nightly newscast. He canceled all the PR and human interest programs, and what he put in place created even more controversy. Many of those in his targeted audience and leaders of his community termed the new programming objectionable. But to Robert and the bottom line, that didn't matter. Robert's idea for a dramatic change in programming and costs turned a worrisome balance sheet into a company prime for purchase by a larger suitor, and that suitor was a giant called Viacom. They love the bottom line and the audience growth so much, with the network now reaching almost 65 million homes across America. How much did they love it? Well, Viacom loved it so much, they paid Robert $3 billion for his dream. Billion with a B. Robert's decision to uh, bet the house paid off. When the buyout happened, every trade magazine, every TV newscast, every newspaper in America profiled Robert's success story, and rightfully so. He reached the pinnacle of capitalism. He became the first African-American billionaire in America. He became the first black majority owner of an NBA team with the purchase of the Charlotte Bobcats, and just seven years later selling his stake in the team to a guy named Michael Jordan. Robert was also the first black individual to be named on one of Forbes' world's richest list. And his network dream became the first African-American-owned company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Hey, not bad for a kid born on a back road town in Mississippi, or anywhere else for that matter. As Robert moved from the TV spotlight to his new consulting business, controversy seemed to just take a liking to him, even in his personal life. Just one of those instances was his very public divorce case. From his wife of over 30 years, she received one of the largest documented settlements in American history. That knocked Robert from the prestigious Billionaires Boys Club. But he did come away with something else. You see, Robert subsequently married the judge who presided over the historic divorce proceeding. Through the years, the kid who cut his teeth in a small community down a dirt road in the middle of the woods took those life lessons to handle every controversy tossed his way. Lessons learned in a place called Hickory, Mississippi. And the man who reshaped and gave voice to that targeted audience in homes across America was Robert Lewis Johnson. The objectionable programming that put him at odds with a lot of folks, but ultimately made him a billionaire, were rap videos on a major network called BET, 
Black Entertainment Network. I came with the idea of BET based on early on there have been a lot of efforts by African Americans to use cable as a way of providing targeted programs. So when I decided to start BET, it was really based on the idea that uh, the time was right for a African American oriented program as, as cable was beginning to make its inroads into urban markets. It was pretty much luck in that I was a lobbyist for the industry and I happened to meet this young guy who was trying to start a channel aimed at the elderly. And he asked me to escort him up on Capitol Hill to go to a particular committee, a committee on aging, it was called, to try to get the endorsement from the congressman, a congressman by the name of Claude Pepper. And when I looked at his business plan, he had a plan that focused on elderly as a target market. And so I said, gee, can I borrow your business plan? He said, sure. So wherever he had elderly, I just crossed it out and put black. And <laughs> we just sort of just mapped over his strategy and, and laid over on that another demographic, African-Americans who had particular buying power, African-Americans who were not properly depicted on television. But the first broadcast was simply a movie. We picked a movie called A Visit to a Chief's Son. It was a movie about a uh, white kid who goes on a sort of photo safari with his father, meets an African kid, a son of an African tribal chieftain. You wanted to put something on in this business that wouldn't intimidate anybody, wouldn't create any kind of issue about what, quote, black entertainment was. And so uh, it, that's, that was the first show that went on here. It is amazing. At least you think this Mississippi magic doesn't deserve merit. Think about it. In just this one industry that was totally revolutionized by creating and expanding the programming with music, the major two players that could come from anywhere else in the world both come from your state, my state, Mississippi. I'm referring to the story also of Bob Pittman from Brookhaven with the creation of MTV, combined with the story of Robert Louis Johnson from Hickory starting the Black Entertainment Network. Pretty good evidence that this state and its people are pretty darn special, especially when someone goes all in and they're willing to bet the house. That's not a coincidence. That is Mississippi magic. A Super Talk Mississippi media production.